Hello, welcome back to Kaiserreich. Uh, so, I'm now switching over to the mixed music for the rest of this playthrough, or for most of this playthrough, I think, where uh, the songs we'll be hearing will be from various different nations and not just the American songs. And uh, to start us off, I looked up, found the Dobre Gubbens Hall, aka In the Hall of the Mountain King by Edward Grieg. It is a Norwegian classic. Alright, so, in terms of uh, president, we're going to elect California Senator uh, Hiram Johnson, who was uh, one of the founders of the early Progressive Party in 1912, alongside Theodore Roosevelt, uh, which stood in the presidential election, but were beaten, I believe, by... Uh, by... oh, who was it? I forget, actually. In 1932, the presidential election there, I think. Um, and California Senator Hiram Johnson, I believe he actually didn't become senator in California, but he did stay, he did uh, attempt to. Oh no, sorry, that, I'm thinking of John Arthur Glatley, but yeah, we're going with Hiram Johnson. Progressive Party becomes the ruling party. He was kind of an isolationist and did vote for some rather controversial and kind of fucked up bills in his day, but some of them he did vote for out of pressure from his peers. You know, like compromises and stuff. The order of things if you're a politician, I suppose. <clears throat> also, I wanted to say, we have changed the setup for our navy here now, so the navy should be setting itself up once uh, I unpause. We've got the submarine groups organized under a Pacific Submarine Command, which will be the command we use when we will be you know, operating as the United States once we take over the rest of the mainland. Uh, in it, we have a submarine uh, organizational structure, kind of similar to what it is today in real life, but also kind of influenced by what little I know about the World War II organizational structure of the Pacific Submarine Command in the United States in the real timeline. So we have... A subron, meaning submarine squadron. Each one, sub subron 1, 2, and 3. Pacific Submarine Command actually needs a leader. I think we'll put someone who has, let's see, positioning. Um, not capital ship, we don't need that. So Nimitz is uh, the leader of the fleet proper. Esther Nimitz. Famous admiral. I think we'll put someone like uh, Felix Stump or something in charge. Or James H. Doyle. Plus water isn't that useful for um, for the uh, submarines because we, we don't have any AA guns on any of them at the moment. Yeah, we'll put uh, Harvey over Overrush with his... Uh, actually no, uh, sorry, actually no, uh, Felix Stump. I was gonna say we'll put the chiseled chin there. Crimson chin looking ass dude. But no, we'll go with this guy because he's... So we've got United States Navy. Of course, we are the rightful United States. So it should be called that. This is also parts of this are the are parts of the Navy that affected to us. We have a battle fleet consisting mostly of dreadnoughts and stuff. This will be what will be launched in order to respond to um, the threats uh, as they appear, like a strike force, in order to not chug up all of the fuel, which it surely will if we have it uh, active at all times. We've got six dreadnoughts in reserve. I'm not quite sure what to do with them yet. And we've got a... we might just put them in the battle fleet, depends on uh, the oil consumption. We've got the carrier fleet as well, or carrier task force, rather. Actually didn't name that. which is headed by the USS Yorktown, Yorktown class. Here. Can't see any history of it on it, uh, sadly. I wish that was a thing. No air wings, apparently. We'll, uh, we'll deal with designs and stuff once we actually get this stuff back up. Navy experience. We'll sort those out later on. Got a bunch of destroyers in a hunter killer escort role. They'll be versatile, they'll sometimes be escorting, sometimes be hunting submarines. Patrol detachment, 
consisting of ships with range and search in order to patrol and look for enemies. And that is about it. None of these are active yet, because I don't know exactly where we would activate them. Maybe up here to uh, raid for a raid uh, shipping, or maybe down by Panama. In fact, yeah, let's do it. Let's deploy a sub run one. Actually, no, fuck, we can't. They don't have range. Never mind. We get a uh, basing rights. We cannot. Which case, in which case, sorry, the only uh, logical one would be up here to raid any trade that might go to Alaska or go from it. I'm not quite sure if there's anything really going in or out of Alaska, though. There's no resources there to speak of. Might as well do it anyways. And we'll have the rest of them exercise. Which will gauge uh, how much fuel we'll be using and stuff, as well as, um, like, when they're active, as well as uh, giving them experience. I've uh, organized this stuff a little bit, so we've got the Pacific States Army <coughs> set up on the border here. They've got an attack plan set up. And they will be attacking uh, to seize Nevada and Utah and Arizona, because those places are rich in resources which we might need. Currently we're trading for some of these, uh, we're even low on steel. And there's a lot of steel in uh, Nevada, or Nevada, and a lot of steel and um, aluminum, or, or aluminium in these places, and a lot of tungsten in Utah. So we're going to focus on that, and then later on we're going to deal with Idaho and um, Montana. Or Montana. Also, again, apologies for the voice thing. It's uh, just the unfortunate reality of things at the moment, because I do have this medical condition which has yet to be diagnosed. It uh, popped up like two months ago, I think, or a little bit over a month ago, and uh, has not left. Uh, so yeah, Pacific Militia still training. National Guard. California Motorized. I think we're going to, um... We're going to deploy them somewhere where they can potentially... Um... Where they can potentially encircle and stuff. I'll, we'll deploy them over here and then have them ready to encircle troops in the Nevada desert. Called the Mojave, I believe. Deadline looms. As the federal government's deadline looms, it has become clear that there will be no building or budging on either side. Newly elected President Hiram Johnson has been busy raising militia across the West, amidst a growing determination to see the country restored and MacArthur defied. The federal government, in turn, has also made it clear they no longer see a path to compensate with the Pacific states. It is only a matter of time. How long until the deadline? Oh, I can't even see it. I'm gonna stop this then, in case the deadline... I stop the exercising, in case the deadline suddenly pops. Chief of the Navy. Oh, there we go, maybe... No, never mind. Uh, I mean, I wanna do Nimitz. Sortie efficiency, naval max range factor, that's really good. Submarine stuff, good, but not actually effect or efficient right now. Trade convoy, and... Amphibious Invasion, not at all useful to us. So we're going to be going with Chester W. Nimitz. Lack of civilian factories, okay. Message from the United States. Declared war. The Second American Civil War. This is a silly event that basically just says, you know, we don't care about the fact that this seems very unlikely to happen, and um, this is all for gameplay reasons. 
To those not in the know, it might seem like the crisis in the United States came out of nowhere, but experts agree that this was a civil war in the year. <clears throat> I think the uh, civil war here is kind of silly, but it's understandable uh, be for from a gameplay perspective. It gives Americans or American players something to do, and makes it so that American, you know, resource dominance doesn't dominate the entire game for the entirety of the early war. The destiny of America is at stake. Canada seizes New England. Oh fuck, okay. We can't declare war on Canada at this point. Uh, they have... Like, they're not the strongest, but they've, they've also got the French Republic. We can't... Like, that has to be a... a a, um... Yeah, we have to deal with that later on. We have to focus on America for now. But that sets a dangerous, uh... Dangerous precedent, or dangerous, like... That, 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 like, that... Canadian act of aggression is, um... Is po possibly going to shape our future if we take over America. Because there's no way the Americans would just, you know, lay down and take that. God, we need guns. Okay, let's buy. Oh, never mind, we can't. Shit, we're running low on uh, on steel. That's because we're both making so many guns. Volunteers from the Canadian Commonwealth after just stealing New England. Oh well. We'll take it. We'll take the guns too. So now we gotta pick the uh, chief of staff here, or the commander in chief, sorry. So, Major General John Lassesny DeWitt. Unlike many members of the staff who advocate for us to aggressively assault the enemy positions, has proposed to focus on oh, because that's a defensive posture, uh, increasing recruitable population factor and division defense on core territory. While Catholic Marshall advocates for an aggressive uh, attack. Actually, never heard of the bite and hold tactic. I'll, I'll look that up and uh, maybe uh, talk about it in the next episode. Uh, let's see. So, I'm trying to uh, get a bead on what these mean. I think this one looks the most. Um, this one looks the most attractive to me. Marshall plan. Operation Glacier. Yeah, this this stuff looks really cool. All this stuff is like... Um, very defensive, yeah. Defense is the best offense. No, no, no. Not in this case. We gotta grab a bunch of territory quickly and uh, get those resources under our... our control in order to actually, like, start snowballing, start building up stuff. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with... Uh, Brigadier General George Carlett Marshall, or Catholic Marshall. The West Coast fails to cross the Rockies and secure a foothold in the Midwest, then defeat will be assured. I agree. In his view, a quick advance through the Rockies with the help of motorized elements will be what ceases through the Civil War. 
With him as commander in chief, America shall be free once again. Yes. <clears throat> I believe that you need to grab a bunch of the uh, important resources in order to actually be able to win this because the East Coast has a lot of the population and a lot of the industry, so we need to grab the resources. Of course, uh, we have plenty of industry as well, but the East Coast has all like the, you know, the naval dockyards and stuff in in New York and all that, and the industry in that region, uh, region there, and as well as stuff in the steel belt. Let's begin the rapid push across the Rockies. Trying to encircle this motorized division so that we don't have to fight them too much. Uh, Japan wants to send us four divisions as uh, volunteers. That's awesome. Canada seizes Alaska. Fuck you. Damn Canadians. The Canadian government has seized Alaska because of security concerns. Don't need this anymore. Syndicalist revolutionaries in Switzerland. Uh, that's uh, Romandie and Hot Savoy or whatever. Yeah. Or Upper Savoy. French troops have... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be able to read all those because I gotta rest my voice a little bit, but... Um, because of the whole medical situation. You can read more about that on Twitter. It's not something serious, it's just... Uh, I can't talk too much, basically, which uh, makes uh, doing this kind of inconvenient, like this whole Let's Playing thing. Oh, and we have the Spanish Civil War as well. At the same time. Ever since the defeat of Napoleon, Spain has been pl uh, plagued by violence, dissent, and turmoil. No amount of pleading, deal-making, and appeasement has managed to do more than paper over the cracks as tensions bubbled. Finally, they boiled over. The Spanish Kingdom has been ripped apart by th uh, a three-sided civil war between numerous factions, the Loyalists and the Madrid government, the supporters of the pretender Javier, and finally, the anarcho-syndicalist CNT Fi. There are already numerous reports of volunteers and equipment being shipped from Sp uh, to Spain from all over the world to support one faction or another. Let's see, what did we get here? Uh, oh yeah, the uh, Californian militia here. I've got the uh, state guard to set up to protect cities and stuff. Because uh, I know for a fact that rebels can rise up uh, behind our lines. And that is uh, problematic. Brazilian volunteers and equipment arrive. In these dark times, it's comforting to know that we have friends, and many hoping for our success. Brazil has sent us volunteers and equipment to aid in the civil war, and while these men may lack elite training and equipment, they traveled almost 10,000 miles to help us free America. Best not to disappoint them, lads. That's awesome. Brazilian volunteers. Oh, that's so cool. Let's begin that march, then. We're sorely lacking in equipment for uh, the National Guard. Dutch elections, they do love their elections. Actually, let me look at the results. Social conservatives, okay, in the um, CS, uh, CSA playthrough, uh, we got leftists and uh, Sweden joined the Reichspact. This happened, like all this stuff, uh, pretty much happened in the uh, CSA playthrough I did, or I'm doing. I urge you to watch that as well if you enjoy this. We're winning, right? Surely we're winning. Okay, so we've got the two divisions uh, arrived in San Francisco from Canada. Let's just take all this, uh, these weapons. We do need guns pretty badly, and we're getting them from all over the world. They could take in steel. Yeah, we've taken some steel in uh, over here now, so that's why we don't need to trade for that anymore. 
Let's buy some rubber from Germany Station. Very likely that the Germans are sending volunteers to the American Union state and not us, and that's fine, honestly. Cool. Four divisions from Japan as well. I'm actually going to make this one completely yellow, just to make it stand out a bit. Oh, and also we should probably set these guys to exercise again, because we are not lacking at all in terms of, um, of oil. The real concern is just guns. Both big and small. French Republic wants to send volunteers. Yes, thank you. And 11 motorized. Thank you. What if I government? Um, uh, let's see. Military intelligence. Actually a good idea. Though we should probably recruit more uh, militia here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's go with one of the ones that give us research speed and decryption. I don't see if there's anyone I know here. Don't think so. Yeah, focus on encirclement when we can. We don't want to waste troops and guns unnecessarily. Japan sending us some big guns. Thank you. This feels way more easy, or way easier than uh, the fighting on the East Coast was. That one was fucking brutal. Though, it's gonna get brutal once these guys start to meet us in the middle here. I wonder if there's any way we could take or get a hold of um, territory down here somewhere. We gotta get bases uh, on the east coast so we can actually use our navy there. Maybe if we push for southern Texas. Attention. That might help. Resistance rises in the midwest. Support for the Democratic proponents in the Pacific government has been strong in the American Midwest, with several protests on the streets frequent. What? Uh, frequent, frequent. Many of whom, of whom appear to be p uh, placing blame for the Civil War squarely on the shoulders of General MacArthur. I mean... This stuff still happens. <clears throat> These protests have uh, recently become more and more organized and have culminated in a widespread uprising across Colorado. Quietly funded and equipped through the underground or through underground means, whether these uh, rebels will succeed in opening up a new front for the Civil War remains to be seen. Hurrah! Oh, we got manpower as well. So, uh, with this, we should just rush directly for our own lines and try to capture territory as we do so. As, strictly speaking, only, or strictly because we... Um, will essentially be surrounded while we're here, we'll be encircled. So we need to um, try to take territory and run. Go, go, go. And this will be... We'll call this the Midwestern Resistance, and we'll color them red. Although that might be a um, might be controversial color in this uh, these times.
Here we've got the Washington Resistance. We'll uh, group them up on the Pacific Militia there and have them join the line. We've got French uh, volunteers now as well. We should honestly be completely fine here. I see no way in hell we're going to lose any of this stuff. Like our, for some reason, our movement here is just amazingly strong compared to uh, the resistance we're facing. See, let's recruit even more uh, militias if we can. We cannot yet. We need to get full control of Idaho. In the meantime, let's, uh, let's see. Prepare the artillery. Not necessary right now. Marshall plan. Recruitable population factor, 15%. Training time, 10%. Or motorized production cost. Um... I mean, I would like one that gives us uh, guns, gun production, but I don't see any of that. Oh, that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll go here. We want this one. Because uh, it gives us... Um, yeah, it gives us minus 10% production time on all guns. Order restored in Nevada. Over the past few weeks, um, Pacific government forces have been busy in Nevada, arresting those we feel pro uh, prove or would prove a hindrance to our control and helping our local supporters spreading the good word amongst the people. We want to reassure them that as American citizens, they have no reason to fear our presence. Our efforts have slowly begun to bear fruit, and even in the midst of all this chaos, or sorry, even in the midst of all this chaos, claim lost and the state is now core of the Pacific States of America. Marines returned from China. With the outbreak of the Civil War, a garrison in the legation cities has, has been recalled back to the U.S. to fight. This has left our diplomats in China in a bit of a bind, however. With the Civil War raging, we need all the men we can get. Cool. Let's see, where are they? There. Yeah, there we go. Legation Marines. Oh, that's sick. Um, so they should probably go under Alexander Vandegrift, but we might have to create another organizational structure. We'll put them under him for now. And I think we'll keep them in San Francisco, because we'll want them somewhere else uh, soon, I think. Possibly in order to take or retake Hawaii. Syndicalism spreads to the Philippines. After the Philippines broke free, they have now had a syndicalist revolution. And this man who looks like a Deus Ex NPC from the original Deus Ex game. Has taken over. These guys are actually very much at risk of being encircled, so I'm going to have them push down instead. We need to fix this, because the line is now fucking disgusting. Uh, let's see, we'll... Oops. We'll have them hold passively for now. And focus the push up in the north. Either way, we are at the 30 minute mark. Which means we're at the end of this episode, so I want to say thank you so much for watching, and if you would like, you can reach me on social media following the Twitter link in the description down below. If you would like to participate with, uh, or in the community at large, then you can follow the Discord link down below. Discord, of course, is free, and uh, if you do pop in, please mention or say something in the welcome channel. Uh, so that you can be welcomed by me and the community, and so that I can give you the verified role so you can shitpost uh, without any restri uh, restraint. Uh, if you would like, you can support me financially using Patreon, $1 or above, there is only one tier, uh, you pay however much you want, and you pay at a monthly base, charged at the first of every month, and uh, I will be, would be eternally grateful if you did so, but it is not necessary, 
the best way to support me is to just keep watching these videos. And for that alone, I am very thankful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.